the top 10 superfoods that aren't. So first we have to answer a question. What makes a food super? Well, I looked into it. And the fact of the matter is, there is no government agency that lists anything as a superfood. It's all made up out of whole cloth, out of different groups and organizations that would like you to eat what they're pushing. Well, industry always jumps into this and go, hey, we'll start calling these superfoods also. That way they can sell more of it. So how would any of these foods benefit you? Short answer, they won't. So who do they benefit? They benefit the people who use this term to market their products. The other thing you might notice is that all of these foods are high in carbohydrates and they will make you gain weight. You're gonna to wanna to stay until the very end because I'm gonna give you three superfoods that will improve your health and help you lose weight. Number one on the list, banana. I don't know how this food ever got on any list because the average banana has 28 grams of carbohydrates, 15 of which is straight sugar. Now, when you look it up, it says natural sugar. My question is always, what kind of sugar is not natural? Yes, we get it. Sugar is natural. And you can't even do that net carb thing that doesn't even work. Why? Because there's only one gram of fiber in a banana. So for shits and giggles, I decided to compare banana to the average donut. The average donut only has 25 grams of total carbs. And those natural occurring sugars, there's only nine compared to 15 in a banana. And again, it has one gram of fiber. So a banana is actually higher in carbohydrates than the average donut. But let me caution you folks, neither one of these are superfoods. Number two, whole grain anything. It could be barley, farro, millet, quinoa, brown rice, black rice, red rice. That's right. Rice comes in all sorts of colors. It doesn't matter which whole grain you're looking at. They're all very high in carbohydrate and low in protein. So you're not getting any muscle or organ building protein, but somehow they end up on every list as being a superfood because they contain things like selenium and copper and other minerals that you might need. But all of these minerals are also found in many other foods in a much higher quantity. So you don't need to eat whole grains at all. And while we're still in number two, it's not just whole grains, it's every kind of grain. They're not good for your health for several reasons, mainly because it will only cause inflammation and make you sick and fat. Number three, soybeans. This is the most incredible food we've ever come up with because it can at the same time be a milk it could be edamame, and it can also be a turkey. That's right, they call it tofurkey. I'm not making this up. Depending on who you want to listen to on the internet, soy can either cause men to grow boobs or not. And if you look at the first page of Google, you would say, well, it's all hogwash because everything shows up saying that soy won't do anything to men. But you have to read deeper. Because you have to remember, almost 100% of all the soy sold worldwide is done through a company called Monsanto. Monsanto controls the soy market. So what does a multi-conglomerate company like Monsanto have to do with anything? It has to do with everything. Because Monsanto is one of these companies that decided that Agent Orange was a good idea. They're the company that got together and figured out how to genetically modify the soy so that when they drop their chemicals on it, the soy won't die, but all the insects and weeds around their soy would. So by definition, if you're eating or drinking a soy product, it's a GMO, and the jury's still out whether GMOs are good or bad for us. I'm, I'm not here to decide that today, but you can go on and read about this stuff. One other note on soy is high in omega-6, and omega-6 can cause pro-inflammatory chemicals in your body. And you may be saying, wait, Vin, I thought omega-6 was good for me. Yes, some omega-6 is good. It's the combination between omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6. And when omega-6 outweighs omega-3, that's where the problem begins. Number four, honey. Can you imagine one tablespoon of honey has 17 grams of carbohydrate? And all of that carbohydrate is sugar. Here's the interesting part. A tablespoon of sugar only has 15 grams of carbohydrates. So honey has more sugar than sugar. Do that math. Number five, pomegranates and pomegranate juice by extension. So what's so great about this? The answer is, I don't know. I've read some reports that said it may have some anti-cancer properties. 
I don't even know what that means. I read another report that said it may have heart healthy properties. Again, what are they talking about? These are just words put together to make it sound like it could help. Again, no study has ever proven any of those. What we do know about it is if you have pomegranate juice, one eight ounce glass has over 35 grams of sugar. And if you ate one whole pomegranate, it averages over 50 grams of sugar. That's more than hmm, a couple of donuts. Number six, durian fruit. Now you may have never heard of this fruit, but it comes from Malaysia and it's a tropical fruit. Now, my question has always been, who was the first brave soul to even try this fruit? Because if you ever smell the durian fruit, it smells like your dog's crap if your dog happened to eat some Limburger cheese before he went to the bathroom. As a matter of fact, in some Asian countries, it's illegal to eat durian fruit in public, especially in bus stations, airports, and municipalities. Now, what else is wrong with durian fruit? Oh, nothing, except that one durian fruit has well over 165 grams of total carbohydrates. There is nothing super about this food except for the super high amount of sugar that's actually in it. So if you're brave enough to eat it, more power to you. But please don't eat it near me. And if you're interested in your health, don't eat it at all. Number seven, quinoa. This is a vegan superfood and for good reason. It's one of the few places where they get more protein. As a matter of fact, quinoa has double the protein of most other grains. But here's the problem. You're only getting seven or eight grams of protein per cup. You're also getting 40 grams of carbohydrates. Let me put that into perspective. A regular beer has 12 grams of carbohydrates per 12 ounce bottle. You're gonna put on a beer belly three times as fast by having one cup of quinoa. Number eight, spinach. Now listen, there's nothing inherently wrong with spinach, but why is it on this list? It's because people think that somehow spinach is super high in iron. And why do we believe this? Well, somewhere around the Second World War, there was a cartoon that shows spinach as helping one certain sailor get really strong once he ate it. There's nothing further from the truth. Again, not high in carbohydrates. Actually, it's pretty high in potassium. So spinach does have some good value to it, but don't think that you're gonna get strong just from eating spinach. And if you wanna get higher quality iron, you would go straight to red meat. Number nine, apple cider vinegar. There's anecdotal evidence that it does everything from lowering your cholesterol, lowering your weight, and reducing blood sugar. Some studies even show that it could fix a broken leg. Don't believe that one. The fact of the matter is, there's never been any great studies to show that any of it is true. Will apple cider vinegar hurt? Absolutely not. Is it a superfood? Absolutely not. And number 10, anything that calls itself milk, but it's not milk. Things like oat milk, almond milk, soy milk, and the like. Here's the deal, folks. Milk is milk. It's gonna come from an animal. So why do these products even exist? Simple, it's veganism. Vegans need something to make their cereal wet. And since they don't use any animal products, they have to come up with something to mimic milk. That's how we end up with shelves in a grocery store full of almond milk, oat milk, and soy milk. The problem is, is that it moved outside of the vegan community and people started thinking that this stuff has to be healthy for you. So everyone started drinking it. Stay away from this stuff, folks. It's not good for you is highly processed and has got a high carbohydrate content. In short, it will make you fat. So here's the moment you've been waiting for, actual superfoods. So what would I consider a superfood? It would be anything where if you were stuck out on a deserted island for over a month, if you only had one thing to eat, this food will keep you healthy. Number one, eggs. And that egg can be from a chicken, a duck, a quail, I don't care where it comes from. The bottom line is an egg is an embryo, so it contains everything within that shell to create a life. You're gonna get every amino acid that science has ever studied with the proper amount of protein and fat, 
all in one nice little tight compartment. Number two, any sort of animal muscle. It could be red meat from beef, it could be pork, it could be chicken, it can be fish. These are all superfoods. You're gonna get all the nutrients you need. You're gonna get a lot of great protein, a lot of omega-3 fatty acids, and you're gonna get some small amount of carbohydrates. So if I'm only getting a small amount of carbohydrates, how will I maintain homeostasis? How will I keep my blood sugar levels even? Well, there's a process called gluconeogenesis where we take protein and we turn it into a carbohydrate and we can store it as such and keep our blood sugar levels completely normal. This has been proven over and over with the carnivore diet where people eat nothing but meat and they're perfectly healthy. Animal proteins, that's the king of the superfoods. And number three, finally we're getting to a fruit, avocado. Avocados are great. They're fairly low in carbohydrates and really high in fat. They're very healthy for you and it's so versatile. You can use it in Mexican foods as guacamole. You can add it to eggs. We've used it to make dressing for salads. We've used it in soups. I've even used it in a blender as a smoothie. You can use avocado for almost anything. I've actually seen my wife take an old avocado and use it as a face mask. It must have worked. She's beautiful. I get it. Everyone's telling you eat this, don't eat that, and vice versa. It's very confusing out there. But remember, fat does not make you fat. So go watch my video, the top 10 foods you should eat to lose weight now.